Hello everybody and welcome to the beginnings of Let's Play Stormblood! Now, this is a continuation of our character Nameless Protagonist. Uh, through the main scenario of Stormblood, as we have done with Aram Arborn and Heaven's Ward in the past. I know it's been quite a while, but we're back here doing this again. Uh, if you have not been here before, basically we're going to go through the entire main scenario. And we're just basically going to summarize, we're going to discuss themes and character developments and things like that of the sort. This is not meant to be a professional critique, but that being said, there is going to be some shade thrown about here or there. And this is coming from a, a biased perspective. So you may disagree with me on some points and that's completely fine. I completely understand. Um, but just so you know, there is some shade going to be thrown at certain points at the end. And throughout, should make that clear. But anyway, before we actually begin, we're going to do this as both as our white mage, as we have done in the past, and why do I have two different white mage sets on this PS4? Or oh, whatever. And we're going to go to this as a dark knight as well. I'm going to swap in between the two at just various points, depending on what I feel like doing for the day. As you can see, they're both currently level 64. So I have, I do have a bit of a head start on the on levels because I'm gonna fall behind with one of them on occasion. So a little quick summary of what's been happening in the interim, just in case you all need a refresher. So after the end of the Dragon Song War, um, we re-encounter our old buddy buddies, and I say that in quotes, the Warriors of Darkness whom Alize has been stalking for the past several weeks, months, whatever. And they're the ones who've been summoning Pribals and then just turning around and, you know, killing them all over again. They're in cahoots with Elidibus, and basically they overdid it on their world with dealing with the Asians and all their evil. Now their world is suffering from basically... A flood of light. So in order to combat this, because that's going to destroy everything they know and love and, and all that sorts, they intend to cause chaos here on the source in hopes of actually saving their world from that fate. And of course they're in cahoots with Elidibus, so we don't know if what they're doing is actually going to be helpful to them or not. Who knows? It's left ambiguous. So with her assistance in actually defeating them and sending them back home to the first from whence they came, Alize joins us in an official capacity back to the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. Not long after that, Ilbert, if you remember him, the, you know, the Alamegan nut job who cut off Rabon's arm because he's a jerk and he's a meanie pants, decides he's had enough is enough and he will suffer uh, suffer people not helping the Alamegans no longer, and he wants the Empire off of their soil for good, and he's willing to do anything to do this. To this end, he is also in cahoots with Elidibus, who grants him the found remains of Nidhogg's eyes. With this in his possession, he stages an attack here at Belzar's Wall, which we are looking at. I know it's nighttime and you can't see much, but that is what we're look currently looking at. I'm sorry. Uh, he stages an attack in an in attempt to force the Alliance into cooperation, uh, basically thinking, tricking them into thinking it's the Empire that is attacking and therefore, you know, they must retaliate. And... Because he cray cray, he ends up, oh man, the fog is rolling in and messing all this up. I am so sorry, guys. That night sky was really nice looking. You're interrupting my narrative over here. So anyway, he takes the eyes of Nidhogg and he, along with the sacrifices he's made of his own countrymen, mind you, and himself, creates a new primal. Now, we don't have the means to deal with this new primal at the moment, so Papalimo decides he is going to use his life force to create a spell of sealing, similar to what Louis Soa had attempted and failed on Bahamut five years ago, in order to buy us some time to deal with the problem. In the course of actually figuring out what the heck we're going to do about this problem, because he bought us some time, but we don't have a lot of it, during in a meeting with the Aorzean Alliance, who busts in but Nero. Oh, Nero. 
And he comes in and he's like, what? You have the solution staring you right in the face. Do you think just throwing the warrior of light at all your problems and then just praying everything isn't, isn't going to go to shit is the right way to do this? No, you're all full of crap. And he suggests we use the elegant super weapon, Omega, the very same creature who had contained the primal Bahamut in the first place 5,000 years ago. Which, crazy plan, I know, but... At the time, he po- he directly points out, hey, you got any better ideas? Time is of the essence here. We know where he is. Let's use him. So we do. And it's kind of amazing what happens. And the new primal, which is dubbed Shinryu, because some of the domains were heard uttering that name, the Alliance decides, yeah, good enough name for it for now. Let's just call it that. Uh... During the battle, it is unclear who is the the victor, but hey, the problem is temporarily solved for the time being. Woohoo, let's go to Alamigo. But of course, because poor Papalimo sacrificed his life, Ida is understandably extremely saddened and upset by this. And during the course of this, it is revealed she's not actually Ida. She's Ida's younger sister, Lise. And that she has been posing for her sister and taken up her mantle and her name and her place as Papalimo's partner for the past six years. But with Papalimo gone, it is decided she ain't pretending anymore. And her new goal is to finish what basically what Ida started and we're going to take care of Alamigo and we're going to try to get the Empire off their soil. But we're going to do this the right way. We're not doing this crazy Yelbert way. Man was cray cray. He deserved to die. <laughs> so with that, and trusty sidekick is about to run out of his time. That's okay, buddy. You go back to your stables and you enjoy some nice Gishra greens. Okay? Okay. All right. So y'all got enough of that? All right. I'm sure you, you have. I've probably redone this voiceover like five times because I kept forgetting something in it. So beginning next episode, we are going to take the first steps into figuring out what we need to do to help the Alamegans get the Empire off their darn soil and figure out what in the world happened to Omega and Shinryu and see if we can't, you know, deal with that problem if it is still indeed a problem. Bye, my chocobo bird. So before we begin, it is going to be worth a quick note that it is currently the middle of May and this entire series is going to be recorded before the end of June and the early access launch of Shadowbringers. Obviously, I can't upload that many episodes in that short a time, so there may be some things said throughout this narrative that uh, are confusing or otherwise clarified in Shadowbringers, I will not be made aware of those things until long after this series has concluded uh, recording. So please bear that in mind. So if on any upload date something it something is made sense of or cleared or clarified or retconned or anything like that in Shadowbringers, please do not put it in the comments. No spoilers whatsoever. Any comments, please stick to the Stormblood plotline. That being said, I shall see you in the formal episode one. Thank you all for watching.